Hello everyone, I'm Amari and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Right now we're in front of the Hardy Boys where they hang out, where the Union hang out. And we're gonna go confront them about them lying the last time I spoke to them. And then the plan is that I will head off to where Everard is and check out the container again, see if I can open it because now I have that, you know, the Jamrock Shuffle. Hopefully I get something good out of it. But also, we'll, we'll see where this takes us because every time I have a plan, I end up just like throwing that plan out the window because I get sidetracked so much. So let's start with... The Hardy Boys. It's you again. What is it? You lied to me. You lied to me. Um, Classe. Am I saying it right? I keep forgetting how to pronounce her name for some reason. Classe says she wasn't raped. Fuck. I knew that fucking whore couldn't be trusted. Okay. For the record, Titus Hardy did not explicitly specify the victim as a whore, nor did he say anything about trusting her. Oh my gosh, she annoys me. Shut up. Oh, shut up and stay out of this, Liz. Yeah, shut up. He raped her. He was out of his fucking mind. You have no idea. She's just in denial, asshole. You don't understand the traumatic experience. She's shutting down, and she doesn't fucking trust you. Yeah, she's crazy, you know. A crazy bitch. You know the type. She's fucked up. They're gaslighting this her. This is a diversion. Stay on track. Uh, cut the bullshit. She told me the truth. Lawman. I'm at the end of my goddamn rope with you. I fucking told you not to push her. His hands become fists. Oh, no, I can't fight right now. I'm wearing my sassy shirt. And you went and pushed her. I am gonna fucking... What? Hit you. Dumb. Oh, no. Titus see, see? Hardy. Okay, her voice rings through the room like a warning shot. Everett personally sent me to take care of this. If this goes south, we'll all be in the shit. But you, Titus Hardy... Are going to be buried. Am I understood? When she's angry, she emphasizes the S. It gives her voice a strangely hypnotic quality. Like a snake. Her lips barely move as she speaks. Someone has to rush in to break the tension. The second in command. Look, Copper. That's him. We know that that fuck was second a rapist and a killer. We got him confessing to it on tape. What? Show it to him, T. What's the harm, right? Here, jerkwad. Listen to this shit. And then come back and tell me the soldier of the apocalypse was an innocent man. This is their last play, this tape. Their story is in tatters. A mess. It might be nice to listen to, but at this point, you don't need to. Where did you get this tape? You think we go into this shit deaf and dumb? You RCM aren't the only ones who know how to bug people. There's no university degree for that. Actually, there are a few. Crypto analyst, radio officer. Actually, there are numerous degrees you can get in signals intelligence. Yeah, like you have one. I might. Ass. He looks to his left. There's a beer there that he forgot. So you bug them? How? We have machines. We're in logistics. How do you think a harbor works? It's advanced stuff. Understood. You've listened in on their communications. How long? Since way before their chief started taking swing lessons. Things got nice and quiet after that. Hmm. Which one of you is doing the advanced radio work then? It's not advanced. You just hold up in a coop all day, writing down what they say. It gets hot as hell in there. Oh, I bet you it's Angus. Don't put yourself Poor down, Angus. Angus. It's important work. Hmm. Yeah, man. You're like a radio genius or something. Those notes are some in-depth stuff. Indexes and shit. I bet you they have Angus, like, hiding in, like, a closet or something? Filming? Taping them? Hmm... So what's on this tape? What's on it? We call it the door gun, a mega mix. You'll know why. Won't door you listen gunner. to it? Now that is intriguing. You had me a door gunner. 
hell does that mean? Why should I care about the tape? You lied to me. You don't care about evidence. Uh, no, I do. The fuck are you a cop for then? <sighs> Pigs, T. They don't care about getting the truth. They care about getting convictions. They are fucking keeping a score on their bulletin boards. I'm worried that the integrity of this tape, whether it's legitimate or whether they've edited it, I don't know. I won't be on your bulletin board. If you don't listen to the tape, we got nothing to talk about. How do I know if they've tampered with it? There's a lot of questions. If you ask them now, they'll just keep bringing All up right. the tape. Listen to it, and they'll have nothing to hide behind. Fine, fine. That's enough for now. I'll get back to the investigation. Don't forget your tape, lawman. Okay, tape. Compliments and Titus Hardy. Take the tape. Fine. I'll listen to it. You do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and keep it. Maybe you'll need a reminder of human ugliness someday. Okay. I'm gonna take off now. Bye. Cool. Where's this tape? Well, I'm not gonna listen to it in front of them. <gasps> I can go back to the window. Okay, maybe I just can't do this at night for some reason. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. Ooh, I think I have more perception gear. Hold on. Revert your gaze. Let me look for my perception gear. Okay, I just have perception shoes, Behind but that's the good dock enough. Workers. 72%. I'm not going to miss this. The hawthorn this. branches scrape the Look glass. out the window. There's a yellow ribbon yeah. tied to one of the branches. Light yellow. Faded with time. A tiny splash of color in the blackness of the thicket. Hanging from it. A bronze key. Someone hid the key in the bush and attached the yellow ribbon to make it easier to find. The bush? Outside? Or? That's not a bush. It's close enough to the latch up there. One can slide it open oh, and outside. just take it. Surely not a coincidence. Someone's hit a key in the bush, point at the window. Huh? Oh, I'm telling Titus this. Uh, can you let me slide by so I can grab the thing? I don't know about that. I'm comfortable here. Don't think any sliding would really help right now. Sorry, fucko. Looks like you're gonna have to go bush diving. Ah. Uh, Good fucking luck with that. Well, I can go around. The Hawthorne's got a bitch of a bite. I'm gonna enjoy the sight of you in the bushes out there. With a loud thud, the old man stands up, pushes the window open, grabs the key from the hawthorn branch, and slides mm. it across the table to you. Cool. Take the key. The key is brass. Workshop spare is etched into its bow. The old man closes the window and sits back down in silence. He seems so over it. Thank you. Come on, man. We were just having some fun. Where's the harm in? I'm tired of listening to your shit. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, nod to the old man. Don't thank me. Oh. I don't give two shits about your key. Does anyone know why this key was hanging right outside the union box window? Didn't even know it was there. Oh. Boys. What is this for? No idea. Never even seen it. Someone must have hidden it there before this room became our place. Look at the key in your hand. I wonder what door what doors does this open? It could open the door in the kitchen. The blue door. Oh. It says workshop spare. Maybe there's a workshop there. It's worth a try. Yeah, it's worth a try. Alright, let's give it a try then. Okay, I, I won't listen to the tape right now. Hold on. I will listen to the tape after we're somewhere safe. Can I say anything else to you? Hi again, gendarme. Oh. Bye-bye, gendarme. Bye. Bye, gendarme. This door? Oh, hell yeah. If I can finally go in here, can I ask him about it? The man ponders his... All right, never mind. Let's go through the door or see if this works. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. Try the workshop spare key on the door. The key fits the dimple lock. Oh, it takes yeah. a bit of effort to turn it after all these years. But then the lock clicks. Finally. The darkness before you smells like engine grease and cut wood. <gasps> yes. 
Yes, finally. I've been wanting to go through this door for so long. How do I go? How do I go through it? Oh. Oh. How do I go through? Oh, sweet. Little cabinets. The pinball says Franco Nigerian. The theme is horse and swords. The pinball is white Diora. The black glass shows a female figure in the m in mourning. Wait, let me put my other shoes back on. My empathy shoes. Should I have my perception shoes while walking around? Where are my other ones? Composure? Eh. Ah, I like having my empathy shoes. I look wild. A note. NB. The spare key is tied to the bush outside the corner room window. Ooh, where does that go? Over there, in the corner. The pinball machine? Not just any pinball machine. This is the pinnacle of pinball. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats. It's lit. You can't wait to get your hands on it's it. It's lit. Kim, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Point to the machine. The pinball machine. Gordy's Goats. A classic. <gasps> One moment. I can hear my cat. Okay, back. Cat is okay. Wait, you played it? A little. Feels like a lot. Too much to play it again. Let's take a closer look, pull out the machine. Ah, oh, great. The lieutenant sighs. Cornelius Gordy and the Mountain Goats reads the golden lettering on top of the back box. There's a small column of text underneath. The machine is coin operated. Get the game on, Finger Boy. Oh, yeah. Those flippers are ready. Lean closer to read the text. Above the painting of a moustached man climbing a hill, a column reads, Inspired by the legend of Cornelius Gordy, taken on the world's tallest peak, Corpus Windy. The Mesk legend holds that when the nation is in danger, heroic Gordy shall return and save his people. Inspect the playing field. The theme of the game is to explore Gordy's climb through the perspective of goats and Aww. to ascend to the top of the mountain in a time of trouble. Cute. The peak of the mountain is at the top of the playfield. All the balls have small goat icons on Aww. them and represent the goats as they race up and down the mountain. That's cute. Areas around the playfield represent Gordy's climb, places he was said to have camped, which the goats can discover. Get them to the summit. What's with all the goats? Indeed. Think of them as balls. Okay. Insert coin. It's only one real. That's an expensive it game, actually. It takes a actually. while to get into a rhythm, but pretty soon you're able to keep three goat-faced balls in play with relative ease. Oh, wow, I'm good at this. Go, go, finger boy. I feel sorry for the goats. If they only knew the kind of guy old Cornelius really was. Wait, what kind of guy was he, then? The kind of a guy who uses the word savages a lot when recounting his travels. Oh. A masked nationalist. A racist mountaineer? An avid huntsman too. He was often photographed in his dining hall, surrounded by wall-mounted hunting trophies from every continent. Ah, uh, that is not cool. He also hit his wife. Oh, very kids. not cool. Other people's kids too. Oh Sometimes my god. pets. Hateful little men. But you seem to be having fun. Oh, his game is cool, I guess. He nods at the machine. I, I'm pretty good at this. Continue playing. Your game is definitely improving. Oh, yeah. The jolly goats are flying all over the board. And although a few plummet to their deaths, you're never left with less than three. I'm good at this. Suddenly, a special passage leading to the summit slides open at the top of the board. This is where the balls need to go. Concentrate and aim for the narrow passage. Maneuvering a goat ball into a position for a perfect hit isn't easy. More fall to their deaths. But finally, the opportunity presents itself. One of them gets through. Oh, Tiny yeah. hammer shatters something inside the machine. Something glass. The words pale rupture light up on the speaker panel and the machine starts filling with a thick milky fog. Something's happening. Is it burning? Congratulations. This is where the game ends. 
It's a cheap way of getting more money out of the players. A stupid nihilistic finale. There's so much fog, you can barely see anything. It's rigged Some for you to is lose? actually leaking out of the machine, and one by one, your goats start slipping, disappearing into the milky nothingness. This can be navigated. The balls leave almost imperceptible disruptions in the fog. Use them to calculate where they hit next. You're down to your last goat, going mostly by sound. Eyes are useless at this point. But that goat is something special. Five times you snatch him back from the jaws of death. Oh yeah, special You're goat, let's go. Oh no. System where neither you nor the pal is able to get the upper hand. This could go on forever. Kim, it can be done. Just watch. I am. I've seen it before. Played it too. I'm bad at you will ball eventually games. make a mistake and then it's all over. Okay. I have a 17% and I'm bad at ball games. Reaction speed. Shoot. Stay on the ball. Ow, if you can't even see it. The last goat it's gone. plummets into the fog with almost suicidal glee. <laughs> there goes nothing, finger boy. Oh, finger boy. Oh, what did Magnesium I get? Magnesium-based life form. Hell yeah. What does this give me? Okay, I don't we need... tell them. I don't need to hear no. that. Bonuses. <gasps> Two volition! Volition! The age of the primitive Magnesium carbon receptacle man glands. Logic, no, no such thing, man. Kind. I get a permanent minus... My logic is, is dipping. My logic's at a three. It's fine. I can, you know... I'm very conceptual. <laughs> is that bad? I have a minus one on authority? Why? Is it from this? No. It's probably from something I'm wearing. Why does authorities, authority say minus one? I could really use some authority to be honest. I'm a cop after all. All right, let's save here and let's explore this area. Ooh. All these mesmerizing machines just waiting to be plugged back in and played. Run your finger across the dust of the white Diora machine. Feels like it might jump back to life any moment. The lights illuminating the white-robed woman. What's white Diora? Some kind of inane pinball theme. Probably related to Messina during the DeLorean age. The history themes are the worst. Diora was one of the three crown cities of the DeLorean era. On the Muindi Isola. The others being... Rhea Sylvia and at Vesperasket. This theme is all about early airships and beautiful, sad, pearl laden women. It's quite nice, actually. The lieutenant grimaces looking at the machines. How about we fire one of these bad boys and play some ball? You can't fire them up, they're broken. Only that one machine in the main hall works the Royalist Pinball. And the goat one. What a dumb name. Royalist Pinball. If they weren't broken, he would kick one of these machines about now. Think Kim Kitsuragi. Kim Kitsuragi. Why? It's strange that are he you doesn't serious? like Pinball. Kim I failed? is a Seolite. His people are incredibly dexterous. And they all love Pinball. Matter of fact. Oh, he definitely likes it. Hey, didn't you guys, like, invent pinball? Us? Guys? Stop. You know, still guys, massive pinball people. I know it's telling me to stop, but, you know. I know he likes it. Seol is an extremely protectionist Isola, inaccessible to the rest of mankind, as it has been for over a thousand years. I have no special knowledge of them, despite my heritage. But even I know that they don't play pinball. They have a rigid class society and a punitive justice system. We should continue with our exploration of this place. It doesn't matter. So you're not all like pinball aces because I could swear I know you are? No, they are not. Let's move on. There's more to this place than pinball machines. Okay, sure. You sure about that, Kim? All right, let's move on then. I bet he really likes it. This small elevator is dimly lit 
by a bulb that's been glowing for ages. The latticed cage is open, inviting you to step inside. Look in. Smells of nougat and sweat. Your head brushes up against the ceiling. There is a control panel to your right, and just enough room for two people to fit in. The maintenance card under the control panel reads, Last Maintenance, 10th July, 88. 88? It says the last maintenance was in 88. That it does. I say, let's brave it. This elevator was maintained in the future? No, it was maintained in 88 of the previous century. So it's not a message from the future. No, I think the bureaucrats just forgot about this backroom elevator after the revolution. Look at the elevator controls. There are large rectangular buttons. Monter, the Sonde, and an international call for emergency assistance. That third one appears to be broken. Ah. A small steel plaque reads Halter 800. Halter is a Koningsteiner lift company who went out of business a long, long time ago. I don't trust this elevator. I wonder what this elevator was used for. Seems like a small freight elevator for transporting machinery. For that, it's pretty quaint. He taps on the guttering light bulb. It's golden in the dark. Close the doors and go up. Are we going to die? Oh, we made it. It's lived in. Small windows taped shut with black plastic. You can't see outside. Boxes of tools and replacement parts line the shelves. Schematics for a pinball machine. Futurism themed. Ooh. I want to wear that. Oh, I look like a detective now. I look a little bit homeless. But still, a detective. Pinball machine has been taken apart and gutted. So, this is where they brought 40 pinball machines to fix them up a long time ago. Everything is covered with dust now. The lieutenant looks around the dusty, crowded room, inspecting the tools on the shelf. Looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball machines at some point. Or this used to be a pinball workshop. Looks like it. No. I'm guessing Martinez North 22 used to be a pinball arcade before it became a hostel. There are machines left over. He taps his foot. A creak. Some dust falls off a shelf. Downstairs in the hall, next to the main door. One of them even works. I've seen one of the hardies bang away at it. Remember the dice maker? Then that means... Whirling in Rags was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade. That is all left over from that. Ah, yes. Oh, this is all. As the novelty dice maker said... This has absolutely nothing to do with the case, I'm sure. But I do like a nice little connection. Kim is enjoying these side but quests. But then, it went bankrupt. Oh. Your skin crawls from making the connection. Could this mean the Whirling and Rags really is part of the Doom commercial area? If that's true, then our cafeteria manager is not going to like it. We should tell him what we found up here, omitting that suspicion. He does not appear to be the kind of man who likes his establishment to be part of a neighborhood ghost story about bankruptcy. Looks like they gave up on fixing the pinball she machines at some point. At some point, 20 years ago, 15 maybe, before pinball went out of vogue. Finished thought. Oh, footprints. You clearly see footprints in the downy carpet of dust covering the workshop floor. Jackpot. These, and like everything else here, are new. Someone's been here within the last week or two. Three weeks maximum, from the dust coverage. It could easily have been one week, too. You know, officer. He looks at you. This is good. He likes it. Mm. There's a little smile there, in the dark of the workshop. He's enjoying this. This isn't bad at all. It was a good idea to see where that door leads. Commendable work, bringing us to this place. Yeah. Okay, so what does it mean? It means someone snuck through what seems like a secret route behind Classius' room in the recent weeks. This may prove to be significant. Let's have a closer look de then. Crouch, study the footprints. Large prints, most likely made by boots. The size is hard to determine. Soul could be bigger than vamp. The soles have left a pattern, uniform, horizontal lines. One person has been here. They've gone back and forth. 
the tips point both ways. This print is unlike one left by a regular worker boot. It is not a brand sole with logos on it. It seems custom made or old fashioned. The prints look like one person went back and forth. Between that and that. Uh, he points at the elevator and then the barred door. Um, this print doesn't look like the odd sold print we found at the Hanging Kim. The size looks about the same, actually. They're not the same shoe, but they could be the same person. This doesn't look like the worker's boots from the hanging, does it? No. No. These little horizontal lines are different. They look custom made to me. Or some same kind of thoughts. foreign print. Hard to say. Still a boot, though. Get up, conclude. Everything around you is quiet. The prints crisscross the workshop floor. All right, let's move on. Someone's living here. Oh, it's Classier. There's a tiny hole in the wall. You see a bedroom on the other side? You can almost see the shape of a man and a woman writhing inside, bathed in drug sweat and dirty linens. Bottles lie around everywhere. I think I can see into Classia's bedroom from here. You can barely see through. Better not to jump to sensationalist conclusions here. The footprints on the floor, however, definitely suspicious. What were those people doing in here? You lean closer to the peephole instinctively. I bet they're doing something quite unnatural there. Sensationally unnatural. Finished thought. They're spying on Classier. Could I open this from this side? This is the barred door you tried to kick in before. To unbar the door. I do it? They, they were spying on her. I have so many points. I don't know where to put it. I'll keep it for now. Yeah, I'll keep them for now. Ooh, I could get another thingy, though. What's cleaning out the rooms? I'll look at this later. Uh, Classe, you know that people are spying Hello. on you? Uh, oh, that's how they taped it! They had the people! What brings you up here again? <sighs> the Hardy Boys... I should listen to the tape first. It's private in here. I don't want her to hear it. Let's listen to the tape here. Tape, door gunner, mega mix. Uh, a magnetic tape acquired from Titus Hardy. It's supposed to, it supposedly holds a recording of the mercenary task force radio communications recorded via a D encryption station. Not a good omen requires a boom box to play. I have one. The portal reel is just what you needed. The reels attach to the apparatus with a satisfying click. The tape is rooted behind the magnetic reader. Play the tape. You push, come on, set, and the tape starts spinning. Violent static and machine sounds fill the air. This isn't Remishan. This is a fucking village. I can almost see the elephants. <laughs> Another loud screech, some kind of machinery. The harbor. That's the son of a Kvalsund crane. When this shit is done, I'm gonna tear that place up. Soldier of the Apocalypse style. Kill shit. Dogs and chickens too. Gonna run a room, Cordy. A real nice room. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking done. I'm done mentally. I'll fucking do them all in. Rape that disco cunt on the counter. You know, the dance of whore upstairs. Do it Kohoi style. Never did get that taste out of my mouth. A click, then silence. The rest of the tape is empty. The lieutenant presses the button marked Arete on your portaria. The tape stops spinning. 
that that's not really evidence of him raping her. He just said it. I mean, he said a, hor a lot of horrible stuff. What was that at the very end? Silence? End of recording. Oh, what do you think? It seemed authentic enough. Probably recorded off the shortwave, then edited to seem more incriminating. He sounded like he was on patrol around the harbor walls. I agree. He sounded inebri inebriated. Still. The, the lieutenant looks at the tape. You're familiar with this look now. It's his sus look of suspicion. Who is this Corti? Corti could be short for Cortenar, one of the other mercenaries, the one he was talking to. Probably the mountain at the harbor gates. Mr. Right to Work. What's Kohoi? A village on the Samaran Isola, in South Safre. Grad committed war crimes there, the kind of thing he talks about. The South Safre conflict is an ongoing proxy war between Grad and Safre. It has been hot for 12 years, with the atrocities piling on, mostly committed by the Grad. You think he was there? Who knows? Maybe the tattoos would have an answer. We would need to know the story of this man's service. A symbol of Soldier of the Apocalypse style conduct in a civil environment. Okay, what now? Remove the tape. I think we've got a few more questions for class here, don't you? This seems to contradict her testimony, at least Does to it? some degree. Really. As you take out the tape, the boombox tunes itself back to the cheery radio again, spewing out beats like it's a Friday night. The contrast feels chilly, inappropriate even. Okay, that was nice. Where's my plastic bag? There we go. Okay, so it was it wasn't filmed here, but there's definitely someone peeping through the hole to Classier. So they did record it over the radio. Cuz it the quality was quite poor. Hello, officer. What brings you up here again? Titus Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intent intention to commit rape. She puts her coffee cup down with a soft ring as the porcelain meets the metal table. This does not surprise her. Hmm. Did he? I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions. Only that he was never bad to me. She doesn't care. If anything, she sounds amused. On this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. Mm, where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased. Recorded via the encryption station. It's authentic enough. Does he say he's gonna do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Oh, she arches her brow. Those are the exact words he used. Yeah. That was practically his pickup line. Oh. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it Kohali style? Yes, the word whore was used. He liked the way it sounded when he said it. As to Kohoi, the young woman lights a new cigarette with the butt of her old one. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little kohoi. It wasn't his... everything. Why say such things like that? Machismo? Maybe. Yes, w was he bragging? Oh no, I'm pretty sure he did all those things. Then integrated them into his idea of normalcy. To keep on living, until they just sort of turn into his, um... Coping mechanism. That's the word I'm looking for. I bet you. Coping mechanism. Running joke. I was gonna say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lely's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. Okay, so this is just normal for him. It was like the Semenese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Yezut all rolled into one person. Then cast in Norani ceramic armor, which he wore in bed and in the shower. And you spent time with this person romantically? No, she said it wasn't romantic. She just liked being around him. You like this kind of stuff? We're all scraping up any happiness we can find, officer. Going around with our little scouring sticks. You, your first love, Mr. Kohoi here. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? He and Martinez, I mean? No. We were too busy laying waste to our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed... She thinks. He seemed happy, I guess. 
at ease. As much as a man like him could be. Thank you for clearing that up, miss. Whenever you're ready. I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Now that you've had some time, can you tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name? Actually, officer, I didn't know his name. I just called him Lely. A nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Lelystad. That's a good start. The lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations recorded neatly in blue ink. Where is Lelestad, the place I mean? In Oranje, officer. It's, um, I think municipality is the term. A nowhere town there. The Lelestad municipality has few boroughs and even It's okay, Encyclopedia cities. will tell us. It's made of agricultural plots near the border of Gottwald. Executive summary. Cows, silos, and wheat. Hmm, nice. Aranje? Aranje's map of waterways? This fits with his tattoo. You are almost right, officer. That means his race was occidental, not mondial. I'll update the form. You're, you were both from Oranje. Yes. We were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No. He was too old for that. And from another part of Oranjen Reik. I didn't even understand his accent. What brought us together was in Oranje. It was bad habits. No love for Mother Oranje. But wasn't he a soldier? This could be worth pursuing. A military man, but not a patriot. No. He left the National Service after they taught him to do what he did on Seminine. He wasn't the flag-waving kind. He was the making money, killing people kind. He was by no means a stupid man. Hmm. A people person. A small platoon leader. Certainly not a patriot. You don't seem... Like much of a patriot yourself. Mm-hmm. Mm. There is nothing on Muindi. The old, old world is dead, and we both knew it. Maybe Oranje did bring us together. In loathing. I love Ravishol, though. I hope she loves me, too. You like this place? A column of air okay. encircles her, brushing gently on the metallic silver fabric that covers her shoulders and her long, slender arms. Ravishal chooses carefully. True. It did not love him. The feeling dissipates. The cold passes. The woman's eyes follow yours to the piece of notebook paper. How old was he, miss? He was 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. I was right then. I said 40. He huh? had many scars that made him appear older. But no. The memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday, like, some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. He had little reason to lie to me. We were slightly off then. Thank you for clearing it up. The lieutenant makes a correction in his notes. Oh, did I tell... Did I trust him with miss him saying that? The adversary one. His eye color? Blue. L light blue. They were like... Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange, seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. Pardon the swearing. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly. And he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth? Yes. Severe. It made him look like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. Oh, yes. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine, made oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. He had a tattoo. What did it mean? Oh, that. 
It was an Oranese map of the waterways. Sure, waterways. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. For showing off to chicks? How so? How? <laughs> Imagine him lying in bed. Freakish musculature laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. Ew, no. Is this Oranese lit? Is this Oranese lit? Yes. This is the very essence of Oranese lit. Sounds gross. A moment's respite. Dark and hopeless is the struggle itself. She leans even further back to demonstrate. He's smoking and drinking, of course. And his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them. Maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like, What was this, baby? She points at the air with her sharp, nailed finger picking out an imaginary tattoo star. And he says, That was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, Okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, Saw some bad shit there. Killed some loincloths. And so it goes. Star after star, port after port, third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. You were the woman in this? Oh yeah. Can you tell us precisely what these mean? Hand her the photo. Oh, I don't no, know if I want you. to show her this. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. She pours herself some more coffee. Go on. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer. For money. He went to Killer Academy in Vredefort. Then he killed some people on the Seminine Islands. And on other islands, too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Ravishol and got killed himself. Thank you for clearing that up. Change of topic, perhaps? Um, we ordered a toxicology report. Any idea what that will show us? A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil. How much Everything. does the toxicology report cost the police of Revishal? I can do it for half of that. Save you some money, make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss. But we'll manage without your help for now. I think we finished with this line of questioning. Hand the lieutenant back his notes. All right. The lieutenant puts the slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself more coffee. Uh, let's return to this later, miss. Leave. Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition, was 42? It's what she said, yes. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of mortality. He was 42 years old. Where is this going? How old are you? Oh. That's where this is going. 45,000 liters of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. What lies beneath, you wonder? You could ask either one of them. Kim, how old do you think I am? Huh? How old do I look? How old? Hmm. 58. What if you're wrong? We were both wrong about the deceased. He turned out to be 40. 42. And he was deceased. He had been decomposing for a week. Well, I feel like I've been decomposing for longer than that. On the bright side, you've been getting a lot of exercise lately. True. The ravages of Algul are nearly as extreme as that of death itself, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. There's silence. Then, a little more. Here it comes. Mercy. Sure, you're 42. Let's go. Wait. This requires scientific measurements. Bring it on. I am not afraid of the truth. To the laboratorium. Oh, I can figure out how old, how old I am. Date of birth generator. Okay, let's not do that. It might hurt my feelings. So I guess we could go back to Titus. Right? Talk to Titus. He's not gonna like this. Come on. 
I bet he likes he's gonna like my schnazzy coat though. It's you again. What is it? Oh god, I I really didn't want to do this, but here we are. So I talked to Classier about the tape. And he tenses immediately. Chest tightens, jaw sets, ready for another blow. And nothing. She stands by what it, what she said. That fucking fucker. You're the worst cops in Revishaw. I gave you gold on that tape. Yeah, but intent doesn't mean he actually did it. That fucker wasn't aimed at you. It was at her. Uh-oh. You caught him off balance. Push, and he will give way. Uh... He, she pretty much laughed it off, Titus. Fucking fuckity fucker. And what did she say then? That it's fine. People are supposed to be like that. <sighs> mm. Oh, do I say this? It's like an awful thing, but I'm trying to push him. If anything, she seemed turned on by the whole door gunning thing. Yes. In fact, I think she thought it was a little funny. Funny. No good goddamn psycho whore. All right. All fucking righty then. I guess it's good then. That fucking... Please try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus. Her voice is a bit softer than earlier. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this, lawmen? Titus rubs his chin with his palm, as if trying to grind it smooth. You don't have to say everything out loud. Just mix and match. Oh, mix and match. Okay. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Maybe she's still in denial, you know, like a defense mechanism. Be straight with me, Titus. Mix and match. Maybe she is still in denial, you know, like a defense mechanism. Yeah. Maybe. That is a possibility. Well, anyways, be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? I already told you. We fucking hanged him. There's less gusto in his voice now. His men, too, are growing increasingly silent. Ooh. The man is slowing down. Looks like a bad blood sugar crash. He can't keep track of all the variables anymore. Who could? It's getting harder and harder to perform one's part in this sordid play. All it takes is a nudge. Come on, Titus. We know you didn't hang him. He was shot. I know you're tired. So am I. Why don't you just... You know what? I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her. Titus said. Fuck off! <laughs> he throws his beer can down. This is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. That lion scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. Yeah. There's a silence in the room. Elaine starts saying something, then thinks best not to. On the floor, bear drips out of the can into a small puddle. No one does anything about it. What is this quiet funeral shit? All we need is some beers in us. Bartender! 20 beers for the dock workers union. Jeez. Why do we make it 40, huh? Why do we make it 100 beers? You're not loud enough. 100 beers? Now we're talking. <laughs> Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. Ooh. Convince Titus he's being manipulated. Convince yes. Titus he's being manipulated. You should know by now. Titus Hardy will never falter, but you know someone who might. One of his boys will. Fat Angus, the powerful guy. Mr. All Muscle, the time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember, it's about more than Glazia. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. Outside, under the rising sun, Tattered and in ruins, the windows of the cafeteria aglow with her morning light. That is it then. Case closed. Look around. We're going home, Kim. Huh? Huh? Uh -huh. 
The lieutenant raises his brow. I mean, I don't think so, but... You'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. In Martinez, they just killed you because they don't like you. Got it. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Uh... Because of some chick? No. Because you're a foreigner? What did they hate about the guy? I can't tell what they hated about him. But it does seem like they hate him because of Classier, but then... Because he seemed really disappointed in her. In a way. Like, disappointed and mad at her. Because you were for the wrong people, probably. God damn right! This is Union Town! You work for the company, we will kill you! Fuck, Dennis! We don't kill you if you work for the company! Half the harbor works for the company! Work for the wrong company, and they execute you. Ah. Uh. They just hang you, like in the Dark Ages, and make a display of your corpse. It wasn't that! It wasn't... We just couldn't get him down, okay? That's it. That's the weak one. There we do. You flushed him out. Now go in for the... For the kill. Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. The old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. What is he doing with his belt? Is he gonna spank me with it? Firearm. A glass zero eight or a 38 caliber pistol. Either is small enough for you to have missed. Oh, he was reaching for his gun. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Uh oh. What happens if I keep talking? You're gonna kill me too? In this bar for nothing? Ooh. Or what? You're gonna kill me? Oh no, he's not gonna kill me. I'll turn to Theo. No. I'm not gonna do it. I'm too old for a shot like that now. You hear that, Angus? They're gonna kill me too! Suddenly, there's an awful ringing in your ears. Your body temperature spikes. You're burning all over. With fear. The most terrible fear. Did they really kill me? Bigger than any before. To your right, you sense the air move. The lieutenant draws his firearm. Did they really shoot me? You only manage to perform one more movement. An instinctive jerk to your left. Then, no sound. No one screams. It's impossible to say where it comes from. More dead cops. Sad news from the district of Martinez. As the bodies of two police officers... He's gonna kill me, so we'll say, wait, let's go back, I wanna say something else. Too late. There is an awful ringing in your ears. The most to your right, you only... Oh my god. Cops. So, don't mess with them when they have the gun. Um, in my rhetoric, it says, just remember, it's about more than Classier. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. Yeah, that's why I chose this, because you work for the wrong people. God damn right. This is union. Yeah. Fuck, Dennis. Work for the wrong company, and they execute you. They just hang you, shoot you, whatever. They can't even remember. Or, uh, this seems better. They hang you, like, in the Dark Ages. No, but this, this is more true. They just hang you, shoot you, whatever. They can't even remember. It wasn't that. It wasn't... We didn't shoot him! There we go. That's it. That's the weak one. Okay. Officer, you Okay, so this part. He's onto you. He knows what you're trying to do. Okay, look at Kim first. The lieutenant has put down his notebook. His hand is resting on his holster. He gives you an imperceptible nod. What? What does that mean? Oh god. Still turn to Theo, because he has the gun. What happens if I keep talking? You're going to kill me too? Boy. Gosh. No. I'm not going to do it. I'm too old for a shot like that now. Maybe it is Angus. You're going to kill me too? Suddenly, it, the, the oh, most it was Angus. Okay. Fear. What if we turn to Angus? Or what? You're going to kill me like you killed him for no fucking reason? We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when... <laughs> okay, so I, I didn't think that I had to put pressure on him like that. Shut up, Angus! He was dead before you hanged him. Betty! Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... The little guy hits Angus on the back of the head, a loud slap. Dennis! Stand down! 
or I'll beat your head in. Theo, take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. Does he? His closed fist is shaking. It's you who's in control. I'm in control. Let them have their moment. <sighs> the room falls <sighs> quiet, so quiet you can hear Angus wheeze. Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. I'm sorry. He grabs his chest. Is he gonna die? Why are you so fucking fat, Angus? <gasps> now it's Elizabeth. all Elizabeth. Because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. I told you just give her up. Lizzie, your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Everard. Fine. I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast. She walks off without looking back. You're in. He's all yours. Questions. Whisper. Kim, we did it. The lieutenant gives a smile. Only you can see. So who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside. Behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. What are you thinking? I'm thinking someone's past caught up with them. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? She's got one of those checkered pasts the shot could have missed could have been meant for her i like that been thinking the same thing myself and you ha had ideas about his past too my dude one of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it they got guns training years of bad blood probably or it could have been someone else from cronell he pauses to think tell you what i'd do Check out the coast for vantage points. Mm. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. Ooh. That's what I'd do if I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. Well, if you were up front earlier, then we could have had this handled. Threw all that turmoil away and became himself again. Whose idea was it to hang him anyways? Hers? In a manner of speaking. What do you mean? We had help from another girl. Another girl? It was her idea to hang him. And I liked it, for political reasons. It sent a good message. It's her, isn't it? The drug trafficker, the missing 8th Hardy. Fella, you think too much. He's off all right. You're gonna hurt your head. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy boys. You don't know her, anyway. Understood. Can you tell me anything about her name, location? Nope. You're not getting to her. It's Klausia you want to talk to. So you didn't fight him, he was already dead. He nods. You hanged the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Another nod. Because the girls asked us to. They were in some girls. shit. Girls plural? There's yeah. another girl? Two yeah, we just said them. that. Take note of this. They'll probably say more about her later. Did she kill him? Cop, I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. He doesn't think she did. Or at least he hopes she didn't. What happened Sunday night? Classier came down. She seemed really out of it. Drugged up, even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurning, you know? Not it's in a gurning. fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How did you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. Good analogy, boss. <laughs> you don't get to talk yet, Chinky. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. He turns back to you. What happened then? We went upstairs. Sure as day the Merc was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. That fucking dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. He means they'd been fucking. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse. We hanged. Who's Tibbs? My brother. He's in the window replacement business. Mm. Tibbs. That's short for. Short for Tiberius? Yeah. Good man. 
Tiberius Hardy. Bet their father's name, Atticus Hardy. Lucretia Hardy would be their sister. Anyway. If Classia didn't kill him, why the cover-up? You may have noticed our girls in some shit of her own. I didn't notice anything. What kind of shit are we talking about? The can't show up on old police radar kind. There are people after her. From the old, old world. Where she came from. These people, who are they? They're powerful. Connected to the moral intern. She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. That's all he knows. That's all she's told him. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder? Why would I? I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a Martinez thing. Okay, you take care of your own. Thank you for this, Titus. I'll go talk to her for the last time. You do that. Hey, cop. Before you go. He grabs his beer and swirls it in his hand, then thinks of something. Suddenly, the wind picks up outside. You hear it rattling the large windows in their frames. It carries newspapers, circles the whirling in rags in a warm column. She, Clausia, came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now, she refused that protection, but... But you would still prefer if we didn't take her away? That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here, this place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. The lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket. He turns to leave. Okay, so Titus Hardy... The Hardy boys are are rough, but they do seem to take care of, of the people here in a strange way. Ah, smallest church in Saint-Saëns, right? Uh, told you I'd rock that shit. It was all right. Subdued. I might start letting people up there again. Now, what can I do for you? Gart, I saw another thing at the whirling. Another thing? Great. Yep. I love those. Classier in room three. She nicked the phone line. Why? No, fuck it. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know why these degenerates do what they do. I thought we had one good guest in the building. Well, anyway, mystery solved. I don't like loose ends. Yeah, neither do I. Thank you for telling me, I guess. Good thing she pays for her stuff on time. I'll forward her the bill and be done with it. I paid it. Not on time, but I paid it. Sounds like she has money tucked away somewhere. Mm. Enough to be a stable paying guest. We'll look for it. Gart, what if I told you I got into the back room behind the blue steel door? Oh, okay. Well, I do hear you make noise back there, so good for you. He controls his excitement well. He's really, really holding himself back here. It takes a lot of willpower not to ask. Obviously, he's been wanting to know what's behind the door. Aren't you going to ask me what's back there? Okay. What is back there? Pinball machines. A pinball workshop. Ha! I knew it. I've always wondered where those machines by the door came from. And they told me there was some kind of pinball thing here, too. I knew it. Were there any back there? In working order, I mean. Why? Do you want to play? Because I might be up for a game? No, I was just wondering if you found pinball machines there... He was wondering about something business-related, about how much money he could make of one. Hmm. You're thinking of turning this place into a pinball arcade? I feel a capitalist plot coming up. Oh, this is how I turn capitalist. Capitalist plot. The pinball we have in the corner now is broken. I want to diversify the entertainment options. It wouldn't hurt to get a little life in here. Other than the hellish karaoke machine, that one's always causing trouble. Sounds like he cares about the place. He's not going to be overjoyed to hear that it's part of the doomed commercial Oh, right. Area. I have to bring that up He too. should still know. You have to be forewarned about these things. I have to warn you. I may have discovered that the whirling is part of the doomed commercial area. What? Why would you say that? We're at a completely different address from that whole thing. So he knows of the doomed commercial area and its address. Wait, so you He's know of the curse? This. 
Everyone knows of it. Oh. The Whirling is listed on the intercom outside as one of the businesses in Building B. You should get your wiring fixed. I tried to call and couldn't reach you. I've been working here for a long time, and that intercom has never been used by the Whirling. Oh. The Whirling was once the East Delta Pinball Arcade before it failed. It's only a matter of time before the Whirling fails too. Does this look like part of a doomed commercial area? This pre-revolutionary tile work, <gasps> these high ceilings, the nice rooms, well, most of the rooms. For 14 years, man, that's how long I've worked here. I've kept this place up through hail and through sleet. Fuck me, if some doom ghost... He steadies his voice. He's done a fine job, too. Though he's spoken of the place dismissively before, the hostel is actually very important to him. You really care about the whirling, huh? Yeah. It, it's slowly growing on me again. It's beautiful in its own way. Especially for this neighborhood. I've been trying to keep it that way. Even if it is part of the damn doomed commercial area. Aha! Uh -huh. So you finally admit it. Yes, your police skills <laughs> have delivered. I'm sure you'll get a commendation. Maybe even a promotion. Who owns this place? Some real estate management company. They never come around here. Just collect money from afar. Honestly, I think some money laundering might be involved. Yeah. And who named it the Whirling in Rags? Well, it sure as hell wasn't the real estate company. No, who was it? It was you. You look surprised. What? It's a great name, I know. Cafeteria managers come up with great names, too. It's from a song. A song? Hail, Holy Queen, by the Ateniers. Hail, Holy Queen of the Sea. You're whirling in rags. You're vast and you're sad. Good pick. That is beautiful. Oh, Gart, I didn't know you had that in you. Uh, what about those other cafeterias you manage? What about them? One is a basement dive frequented by chain-smoking communists. Mm. I can't tell you how sick I am of Kras Mazov and Ignis Nielsen and all those old ghosts. He's hesitating, not sure if he should share this information with you. Encourage him. And the others? The other is a kebab cart. It's very successful in its way, but it's nothing like the whirling. Well, good luck to you with this place, then. Luck has got nothing to do with it. I need to think about where I'm going to place those pinballs. I have a feeling they're going to help. Against the doom, it's implied. Yeah, good so luck with that. if you didn't have anything else to tell me oh, no, about I got one my more establishment, thing. can we, you know, wrap it up? There's a peephole in the wall. What wall? Upstairs in the secret back room right next to Classier's bedroom. I found it when I found the pinball machines. I'll have it fixed at once. Thank you for letting me know. I assure you, the Whirling does not abide spying on its guests. Yeah. The color has drained from his face. He didn't even know how to get there. All right, you've been notified. Thank you. I'll patch it up personally. Was there something else about guard. the establishment? I hope oh. not. Uh, nope. Yes. Goodbye. I'm no longer staying in this establishment because it costs money and I like free. Why won't he let me stay here for free? Alright, back to class here we go. Okay, we're not gonna make it to Everard today. Because we keep doing other stuff. They said that she had money. Where would she have money? They said she has money. 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 This medicine cabinet. Okay, no money there. No money anywhere. She's getting money from somewhere. It's always good to see you. She cracks a weary smile, leaning back, back against the railing. Something in her demeanor has changed. She's tired, consigned to her fate. To being here with you and what's to come. The Hardy Boys told us what really happened. I understand. She puts her coffee mug on the table. Just like that. No resistance. Her shoulders are slouched, her feet long and straight. 
You don't look surprised you were expecting this. I knew there was a chance you'd get them to tell you. It's what you do. You're the police. For what it's worth, I'm sorry for wasting your time. This is good. Clear the air first, between you two. Then move on to questions. Okay, clear the air. Is it? Something is off here. Oh, no, something's off. Shush, I can't hear what she's saying. Oh no, they're arguing. Let the miss speak. She's tall and thin and tired. A twig trying so hard not to break. If you knew we would find out eventually, why did you waste our time? Because of the Hardys. I couldn't just dispense with them. They were only trying to help me. Out of the shit I'd gotten into. That's not a good enough reason. You're right. There's more. More? You answer to the coalition government, and by extension, the moral intern. She searches, reaches for a new cigarette. Briefly glance it over her shoulder to the sea, as she's done time and time again. A grand expanse of water reaches over the bay and to the horizon. Gray and pale violet in the morning light. What lies beyond it? The pale. The Buindi mm. Isola, the Occident, and then Aranye, the old, old world. Is that why you're looking over your shoulder? You're afraid of the moral intern? You share a database with them. You send people to their courts. She lights the cigarette. What's going on? What did you do? Just business. But bad business for some people in the moral intern. If I show up in your records, officer, they will find me. They will... What happens if they do? They will kill me, sir. If you file my name, take me in for questioning, enter me into the moral intern mill, well, then I'm fucked. For nothing. This murder didn't have anything to do with me. Fucked? People after her? Moral intern people? This isn't Oranese lit. No, it's not. You said you studied Oranese Lit. What is with this fugitive stuff? I did. Hmm. I also had a side job selling insurance that I was really good at. Got picked up by a bank. Competitive intelligence, they called it. After that, I sort of, uh, transitioned out of the whole culture scene. What did you do to have these people after you? It's not nice, but it's not illegal. Not here in Ravishol. Or even in Oranje. What exactly did you do? What is it? Industrial espionage. I joined oh. a business collective with the intention of betraying them. I did my job well enough to be asked to do it again. With a bigger company. The kind you really, really don't fuck with. I took their ledgers. Two decades worth of accounting. I need the names of the companies involved and who hired you. He taps on his notebook. The job was lose to an county savings bank. They sound small. But they're part of the Lou Scott conglomerate. That was the second job. The first was some printer company. You wouldn't know them. But she really destroyed them. Mm. She still feels it. Thank you, Empathy Shoes. As to who hired me for the job, I don't know. But they're after me too. Along with Lou Scott and their friends in the MI. <sighs> Once you're done in the competitive intelligence circuit, you don't have allies. You're radioactive. Lowe's cap. These people engineer financial disasters in second world countries. Oh my gosh. The conglomerate also includes the Bank of Consecration, Airbird, and the popular Papalolo line of dairy products. That's a lot of shit you've gotten yourself into. It is. Many people lost their jobs. Not just C-suite. Ordinary people. What I did to get to accounting... She shakes her head at the thought. A lot of people got hurt. But that's just more of my shit you shouldn't have to deal with. You're solving a murder. That can wait. Look into her eyes. There's more. What did you do? I... One of them killed themselves because of me. Oh! That's... Not easy to deal with. How do you deal with anything? I don't know. It's all just... How do you do it? 
by not remembering a single goddamn thing. That would do the trick, yes. She has almost devoured the cigarette she lit. She looks at it sadly. What happened here? The night he died. We were there. Together. In bed, I mean. She points to the window. The silhouette of the bed is visible. Tell me exactly what happened. Come on, okay. girl. He was in a kneeling position. He had just entered me. I was on my back, looking at him. I heard the window behind me shatter, and I turned to look. There was a hole in the glass. I turned back to him. His eyes were looking through me, and his mouth was open. Dumb. I could see. I could. Her chest rises and falls with each word. She keeps herself together and says it. I knew he was dead before he fell down on top of me. Then what happened? He was heavy. I pushed him off and he fell to the floor. There. He only had his boots on. I bit the pillow, not to scream, then ran downstairs. There's a long pause. She just stands there, her arms at her sides. I waited for the second shot to come. For me. I thought there would be one. It never came. She's forgotten about her cigarette. The butt has burned right down to her fingernails. Oh, your cigarette, miss. Oh. <laughs> she looks at it and quickly tosses the butt aside. Um. I'm sorry this happened to you? So am I. She immediately proceeds to light another what one. What time was this? When did it happen? It would help us if you could be as precise as possible. 11.30 to 12.15. I don't know the exact time. Around midnight. It's okay. Were you inebriated? Not as much as usual. He'd done a line, plus other things. I was drinking. Wait. Titus said she was gurning her jaw off much more than usual. Titus said you look pretty high. Oh, yeah. I did one of his lines, just to clear my head. Did you hear or see the shooter in the course of this? No. What did you do then? Nothing. I was trapped. I was stuck in my room downstairs. I got some clothes on and crawled back up, drew the blinds. Blood was coming from his mouth. Not a lot. Just a little. He was still on the floor, slouched. I couldn't be there with him anymore, so I ran down and out of my room, into the hallway, down the stairs. I knew there would be people there. Run, woman. Run past them, and out into the streets where it's dark and people move, to the lorries at the intersection, as far as you can. Why did you run away from here, as a matter of fact? Why are you here now? Yeah, why I is she still here? Ran. I ran from an entire isola. There is... I can't run any further. Not with these people. This is as far as it gets. What happened after you ran downstairs? Sylvie was tending the bar. A lot of people were there. The Hardys were at the table in front of the stage. I think the union box was full. Ruby was there too. They were having such a good time. I sat down and they all welcomed me. I didn't even have to say anything. Ruby knew something was wrong. Ruby? Before we continue, who is Ruby? Ruby. You know, the leader. The leader? Of what? The Hardy Boys. I thought the Hardy... I thought Hardy was the leader of the Hardy Boys. Well, nominally, yes. Ruby's the one they go to when things happen. Like, things they need taken care of. She's the organizer. Have I met a Ruby? Would you say she is the eighth hardy boy? Why not? Okay, let's go on. What then? Well, Ruby said let's talk upstairs. I showed her the room. I've known these people since December. They know my situation. That I can't leave a paper trail. Ruby was the first one I told. She said she'd take care of this. That's what she does, you know. Take care of things. I helped her get the body to the bathroom. We used a belt to pull him up under the shower. To keep him upright. To mislead you, they were tampering with the body. To produce lividity, matching a hanging? Yes. We completely missed the tampering. Looks like you got there in time. What was this, 20 minutes after death? Oops. Oh, 
About twenty, yes. Ruby explained he would make the blood... You know what he does. She looks at the ground, then raises her right, light brown eyes to meet you. Then what did you do? Ruby went outside to talk to Titus and the boys. I was just looking at Lely in the bathroom. I had to put his clothes back on. His armor, too. It was tough, but I've seen him take it off and put it on many times. It took Ruby maybe half an hour to come back with Titus. I'd gotten him ready by then. He carried him out. I knew what they were going to do. Make it look like a hanging. Ruby said they would. What did you do while they were hanging him? Ruby said to wait here. She also said I wouldn't see her for a while. That we should lay low or something. So I did. This Ruby, where is this Ruby now? I don't know. I haven't seen her since. We will need to take this question to the Hardy Boys. When it happened, did you hear a gunshot? When he was shot? I may have. I don't know. I couldn't hear anything over the glass exploding. The gunshot wasn't that loud. This is something to keep in mm, mind when assessing from, the distance of the shot. From far away. I don't think she killed Lily. Could the people after you have killed him? That's the first thing that went through my head when I heard the glass break. And? I thought they'd found me. They've killed him to punish me. All last week, I've tried not to talk to anyone or be seen with anyone. She looks at her cigarette. So they wouldn't be hurt. I've come to understand, however, this is paranoia. What happened didn't have anything to do with me. Either way, something to consider. We can't go after loose cap. Not yet. There are other, saner leads. I don't ask you to, Lieutenant. But there's one thing I know, is that you'll get nothing from there. Why did you call the cops if you're hiding? Because I'm an idiot. The answer comes fast. Which is an indicator of truth. I don't think so. Why did you do it? You have to understand. The people around here. No one was making the call, and he kept rotting. And then they picked his clothes off, and that little fucker threw stones at him. Hey, Kuno, Kuno is just bored, you know? Her jaw is clenched. Her throat moves. It takes all her strength not to cave in and sob. Once. Just one time. He kept throwing stones at him for three days. I could hear the thud. Thud. So I called you. I hope with all my heart it's not the last thing I do in Ravishol. She definitely called the cops. That was task complete. It could not have been a lie. That is impossible. <laughs> it's task complete, therefore it was the truth. Okay. Um, when was the window changed? Point last to it. week. Angus and Titus's brother, I think he's called Tibbs. Angus? Care of it. Angus is Titus's brother? You should have another look at that window after this. Reconstruct the scene. It's right there. In her bedroom inside? Yes. You see the glass sparkling out of the corner of your eye. Cool. Uh, I think we're done here for now. Conclude. She nods silently. She doesn't even smoke. Just picks up the cold coffee and holds it in her hands. Um... The lieutenant glances at you, then the door. He's thinking, are we done here? Or, or maybe you should take her to the station for safekeeping. Oh. She lied to you, and she's a flight risk. No, that won't be necessary. Just leave her alone. She's been through enough. She doesn't need this police brutality. Multiface, I'm beginning to doubt your judgment. Are you sure you're not sleeping on the post? You have to wake this one up with force if you want to continue pushing her. Drama. Hold on. I have drama pants. <laughs> I have a jacket with drama on it. <laughs> I'm gonna use it. Ooh, I'm thinking. You finally made it, haven't you? People point fingers at you and whisper to each other when you pass by, wondering to themselves, where did that man get such a cool jacket? Yeah. Did he receive it upon graduating the École Normale Supérieure de Badasserie? Is he dangerous? Yeah, a danger to myself. What am I doing? 
This is insane. No, no, damn right I'm dangerous. You are very dangerous, Yeah. My dangerous and cool. In fact, no one dares to say a single thing about the jacket. But believe me, they are all very impressed. Wait, can I wear the other one? And see if it does that to anything? To, to me? Fuck the world. Oh, how do I get him to wear it though? Because I got it I got yes. two. I got us one each. What about me? Aww. Good. Let's change the subject. Damn it. I want him to wear the other jacket. Excuse me? Nothing. You have a... A, dis a moment okay. passes. The lieutenant glances at the sport. Damn it, I want him to wear the other one. I was hoping that he'd be able to. Okay, plus three to drama. Let's try it now. I was just thinking, what a nice day for questions <laughs> pertaining to a murder investigation. In God's name, wake up. Who? What? Dear God, you've been lied to. She could have killed her lover and lied to everyone. She's not candid at all. She smoke and mirrors and willow whistles. She killed him. She probably didn't give you her real name either. Why would she? Arrest her immediately before she further entangles you in her web of lies. Ah. Uh, really? Uh, oh. oh. Kim, why have we not arrested her yet? There may be grounds here, at least for an extended detention. A little whimper. The young woman hears you. She's looking around. You know, I'm thinking you didn't make the call to the station. I did. What is this? I called your desk or whatever it is. The numbers are all over town. Call 8102 for emergencies. There was an older woman on the other end. It sounded like she was smoking. She took my complaint. She coughed. That is the emergency's desk number. Anyone could know that, sire. By looking around and calling the desk. I don't believe a single word she says. Drama knows. What time did you make the call? Drama knows. Thursday night. It was late. Sometime after 12. It checks out. Anyone could know the number and that someone coughed. It means nothing. But I know the time of the call, too. I know I have not been 100% truthful with you, officers, but I am now. Okay, your real name isn't Classe Amandu. I agree. You wouldn't give us your real name, not when people are after you. Okay. Okay, what? Okay, it's not. I knew it. You log your work every week. It's all transmitted to Common, sir. I couldn't just beg you not to enter my name, so I lied. Like I lied before. Like I did at LCSB. I have to lie all the time. I'm so tired of it. Was the passport bullshit too? That passport you keep hidden? No. It's submerged in a plastic boy on the coast. Of course the it is. It just doesn't say Clausia Amandu. It says Anouk Meyer Smith. Anouk Meyer Smith. Falsified documents? Passport and visa. Given to me by my employer. I can't even use them. My employer probably leaked the name, Maya Smith, to hurt me. Why would they do that? I didn't show up to a rendezvous. They don't take that lightly. I didn't show up because I was afraid they'd do something to me. The job was finished. I'm just a liability now. She fears an arrest right here and now. Where is the buoy? This West of the board. Oh, sorry. And the reeds. On the coast there. I put it there when I first arrived. Haven't been there since. I'm not sure I could even find it now. It's useless. <sighs> of course it is. The wind rises. So do the hairs on your back. Somewhere west, small bubbles rise from a plastic ball floating in the water. Rusty, the color of oversteeped tea. What's happening? Long, spindly arms are spinning the boy around. Turning it, inspecting it, like a magic eight ball, trying to find a way to snap it open. Oh my god, can my shivers do this? Nothing is useless. 
west of the boardwalk in the reeds, we have to check this buoy out, except Tass. The lieutenant makes a note of it. You're welcome to it. It's in the reeds northwest of here, past the Bergen sewage pipe, right near the water line. Okay, tell me your real name. It's Katarzyna Elazie. Katarzyna Elazie. The smile on her face is timid, almost painfully so. It's a grad name. Jimsk or Yuga grad in origin. Not occidental at all. Smells of motor oil, tiger, economic desolation, and rock music infused alcoholism. It also makes Klazia almost an alacronym for Katarzyna Elazie. Uh Katharzyn Alazie is not even not an Oranese name. It's is it? It's not even Mundi. It's Grad. My parents were Zemsk immigrants, but I'm nationalized Oranese. All I remember is Oranie. Alazie is my father's name. Wait, Klazie is an abbreviation of Katharzyn Alazie. It was a sentimental thing. Mm. I want it to be more me here this time. So I used my nickname. A nickname? Who gave you this nickname, Clausia? Who, who gave it to you? A teenage boy. A million years ago. I'll just call you Miss Oranje, disco dancer. You can call me whatever you want. Okay. Uh, she smiles too tired to laugh enough. She nods, her back straight, ready. For whatever is oh my next. gosh, I actually do call her that. What if I told you you're under arrest, Mr. Oranye, disco dancer? But I haven't done anything. Anything illegal. I mean, the drugs. She backs up against the railing with a forced smile on her face. She purposefully misrepresented information crucial to the case. I would say that that's illegal. Fucking mind games. Enough. That's right, gang. Yeah. Stern and merciless Stern. now. Stern and merciless as we reel her in. Okay. We reel her in. <laughs> You're not playing these mind games with me anymore. Wag your finger next to your head. You're coming in. Mm. No, I'll say this part. I'll, I'll like what, what, what rhetoric said. Rhetoric, you misrepresented information about the case. Without the Hardy's confession, we'd know nothing. The lieutenant produces a pair of handcuffs. Oh, girl, you better not run. Please, no. Her eyes become round with fear. She tries to back further off. But there's nowhere to go. A two-story drop to the plaza mosaic. If she could, she would have run before. I think I know who did it. Who shot Lely? I can tell you. I can help you. Mm. She knows something. What do you know? Who shot him? She's silent for a second, as if looking into herself for certainty. Then, in a hushed voice, she says, gearing up for this betrayal is hard for her. Come on, Ruby. Why do you think it was her? She has this thing for me. Ever since I met her and the boys downstairs. She's been pretty frank about what she wants. And what is that? Sex. And more. I made the mistake of confiding in her. I told her I was on the run. She started protecting me. It became an unhealthy relationship. When I started spending time with Lely, she told me to end it. Said there would be shit if I didn't. It was not a good meeting. We stopped talking after that, but... I don't understand. What exactly in your relationship made you think she is romantically interested in you? She said she's in love with me. She even asked me to run away with her when I told her I'm a fugitive. She started developing notions about our relationship. And you led her on? The lieutenant narrows his eyes. A little. I was flattered, you know? But then I had to let her off, and it was not easy. I came to regret being friendly with her. We may be kissed, nothing more. Sounds like she was fixated on you. But I don't, I honestly don't know what to make of this. I know what this sounds like. That's why I didn't want to tell you before. But she knew what had happened when I came downstairs. Somehow, she knew Lely was dead. She wasn't surprised at all. When we came up here, she was calm as a stone, too. 
She cleaned it all up like she had a plan. That is a little strange. People don't usually keep things together under stress like that. When Ruby said there would be shit happening if you didn't end your relationship with the deceased, was she threatening you? She came over one night, drunk, said she'd turn my life into a living hell. I've been threatened before, as I can tell when someone knows how to do it. And she's a pro. She must be. To keep the hardies in line. I tried severing ties with her after that. I thought it had worked, but... She looks through the window of her room. Some of that fear is still with her. She exhales sharply. What are you talking about? She's afraid you'll arrest her. And how could she have killed him? You've been through there, right? I saw you come out. She was the one that was it looking through the downstairs. peephole. She points to the door that leads to the pinball workshop. She could have come to the roof through that, then made the shot right here where yep. I stand. It was dark outside. I wouldn't have seen her. Then slipped back downstairs without anyone noticing. That is possible. That is, unless the cook saw her. Interesting theory. Did she know that door exists? Had you been out there with her? Yes, of course. She's been up here many times, jacking private stations off the ring mm. antenna. She used to come here to drink on the roof with me before it got weird. So it does sound like her. Okay, that's it for Ruby. Okay. And what? I don't know, it just... Arrest the liar, now. She is lying, She's but not... stuck here. She's already in prison. Look around. She's only trying to help you. Who? Her. Stop letting her distract you. I don't know, do I arrest her? I don't... I don't want... You know... I think the lie, she told us about the lie already. The lie is she has a feeling it was Ruby. That's good, but I think we should still take you in just in case. I'll keep you here, miss, for now. Ooh. I don't know. I think I think the lie that the drama picked up was her lying about knowing more. Like she kept Ruby Ruby's involvement out of it. I feel like she's telling the truth because it's possible. It's possible that the Hardy boys didn't know about the key, but it's clearly somewhere that they go. Like it's right outside that that window in the bush. So it's somewhere accessible for there where they hang out. There was another track like footsteps, so she's the eight. And if they did have this relationship, if she, if Ruby had a relationship with Classier, it's totally valid. I'm I'm worried about taking her in if her past catches up with her. Would it? I mean, I don't have to arrest her and book her under her real name, right? I'm worried that she's gonna flee. I mean, other than her lie, she didn't kill Lily. I'm hoping she doesn't like cut it and run, but. I'm not going to arrest her because, I don't, I mean, she's a little manipulative, but, oops, she didn't exactly do anything wrong, wrong. Her life is just an absolute mess. Like here, uh, here, oh no, it's here, Savoir Faire. She's stuck here. She's already in a prison. Yeah, so I'll keep you here. Miss, for now, back off completely. Thank you. Thank you. You won't regret it. Please don't make me regret it. Something tells you, you will. <sighs> she nods. Then okay. Okay. I was just checking, just in case she runs. Uh, let's change the subject. She slowly, slowly lights another cigarette Damn, and she steadies her lot. breath, as if in the presence of some tiger. You are. This is not the end of this. Let's go back to the lies you Lies. Told. I... She repeats and trails off. It's unclear what she intends to, intended to say. Yes. We demand. Ah, okay, it's all of that. She slowly, all right. slowly lies. Let's return to this later. Whoa, a lot. That was, that was a lot. That was a lot. We have to find the buoy. 
and then we have to talk to Titus again. Jeez, we're we're gonna we're like back and forth here quite a bit. Um, I'm wondering whether I should leave this for a little bit. I kind of want to just like finish up the Hardy Boys stuff, you know? Because it's here, and then we can start doing Everard stuff and all of this other stuff. So, yeah, maybe that's what we'll do. We'll leave this episode here though, because oh, I should look at the window again. Let's do, look at this one more time. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished golden halo. What happened here? A vague sense of disappointment fills you. The glass shimmers as if taunting you with its secrets. <sighs> Tell me again, Kim, what are we looking for here? Ballistics? I'm not exactly sure either, to be honest. My imagination has a way of failing me. It's a weakness. You know what? I'm prepared to put something in visual calculus. This window is All right, what happened here? on the inside. Golden light okay. melts away into the blue, glassy darkness of your mind. In it are two neon-lit shapes. A man and a woman on the single bed. Whoa, a two-hearted spider. A two-hearted... What position are they in? Like the witness said, the man is kneeling. The woman is on her back. It's the mm. night of March 4th, and a shot has just been fired. So this is the church. This is the boardwalk. The lighthouse. And I haven't been there. That's a new map, then. The man looks directly at the woman. The shot's possible directions converge in his mouth. A ray cast from somewhere outside, entering his brain. Where does it come from? From the roof outside. Location A prime. The glass fractures around the bullet hole. Shards face inwards like a corona behind the woman's back. Inspect the ghostly figures. The man does not know the bullet has entered his brain. He never will. Death comes faster than the realization. Have a look at point A, the roof. The ray cast from the man's mouth unravels into a fan of possible directions, all on the roof at first. The shot could have come from any of them. This is composite location A prime, most likely of the origin points. Shouldn't there be a gun gun residue outside? There could have been. Then the rain and slush and wind washed it away. This was more than a week ago. Okay, so I'm what, 80% sure the roof is where the shot was made from? 72%. 72. With an antique weapon that fires military grade ammunition. A Belma grave rifle, for example. This is a good short distance, but not too short. The perpetrator aimed with their back against the railing, or possibly kneeling for precision. This would explain why it only took them one shot. The lights were on in here. Outside it was dark. It was like shooting fish in an aquarium. A well-lit aquarium. The victim opened his mouth to let the bullet in. Neither of them would have seen anything outside in the darkness. Too busy with their own bodies. Could the shot have come from inside the room, a closer point? Point X would contradict the woman's testimony, rendering the entire proposition void. Okay. These figures would be wiped out, detective. Are there any arguments against A prime the roof? None that you've found thus far, but that doesn't mean there aren't any. Could there have been another point of origin further away? That's a 28%, yes. In this model, the shot could have come from a greater distance. Nothing excludes the possibility. Should we extrapolate to include every possible point of origin in Martinez? Extrapolate the radius to include all of Martinez. According to your map of the district, this shot could have come from a wide angle of locations, starting with the northern edge of the abandoned boardwalk, ending with an islet in the bay. Let's call them B Prime. More B precisely. Prime for boardwalk, B double prime for land's end, and B triple prime for the islet detective. There may be smaller points in between, but those are too fine to zoom in on. Have a look at point B prime, the boardwalk. 700 meters away. The likeliest of these B positions, 20% chance. A skilled sniper could have made the shot, provided he had a safe sniper's nest. Even with the light on inside, 
We're talking military training. At that distance, the perpetrator would have had to take wind direction into account. Okay, let's have a look at point B, double prime land's end. 1.2 kilometers away. The least likely of these positions. Let's say 3%. A truly skilled sniper could have done it. Possibly from a tent. No, too far-fetched. Okay, too far far-fetched. Have a look at point B, triple prime, the islet. One kilometer away. Mm. The point beyond the docks, on an islet in the bay. The fort is ruined, but the perpetrator may have found a stable spot on the beaches surrounding it, where the concrete crumbles into the sea, as you saw in the coin-operated viewer. Oh, I remember that. The shot would have been a small miracle, 5% likelihood. There is an extremely narrow field of view from the bay to the window, between Rue de saint Gislaine 10 and 33A. The angle would have been extreme, and access to the islets is questionable. Kim, do you think the shot could have come from further than the roof in Martinez? From where, precisely? Let's say B prime, the boardwalk, B double prime, lands, and B triple prime, the islet. I see you have given this a lot of thought. Are those the locations you've singled out in addition to the roof? And what is the likelihood, in your opinion, that it came from a further distance? Much less than from the roof, but still. Okay, well. We should see if there is gunshot residue or sniper nest if we go down the coast. Rule these spots out one by one. It would be the diligent thing to do. Yeah, Until then, personally, I'm going with the roof version. It fits the hidden path through I the agree. whirling. A simple hypothesis. Oh, it's just like I thought I solved it, right? That it's on the roof and Ruby and then now, now the game presents me an alternative. And then now, now it's a possibility. Man. This game's too interesting. Way too interesting. I ha I have somewhere to go. Like I have to be somewhere. I have to leave. And I'm i I'm still here doing more. But anyways, yeah, like because I have to go somewhere and leave. We will leave the episode here. I'll make sure I'm gonna save right in front of Titus so that I confront him first and then we check out these sniper nests. Oh maybe I wanna go to Everard first before I pursue that trail, because oh, I don't know. There's so much I wanna do. Okay, I'll look at the nests first, if I can. Okay, that, that's this is where we'll leave the episode before I miss my plans for later. And um, until the next episode, guys, take care.